Are you ready for some holiday cheer? We're exploring diverse celebratory dishes from around the globe with their unique traditions and flavors. From Hanukkah, Diwali, and Christmas to New Year's, food is central to cultural celebrations. Don't miss this flavorful adventure on this Seasons Eatings episode. I'm Professor Megan. And I'm Professor Susan, and we're your Your nutrition nutrition profs. profs. We are registered dietitians and college professors who have taught more than 10,000 students about health and nutrition. We have answered a lot of questions about nutrition over the years. Some we get asked every year, and some are rarely asked, but very interesting. We are here to share our answers to these common and uncommon nutrition questions with you. So bring your curiosity and let's get started. Welcome Welcome to to our class. Welcome, everyone, to our 25th episode. 25. 25. Wow, that's awesome. We are so thankful for all of you listeners, and we love hearing from you. And we've actually gotten quite a few questions recently. We have. And this podcast, really, it is a lot of fun for us to make. And we learn something, too, when we create these episodes. So we love it. Definitely. And thanks to our international listeners, we've got listeners in more than 17 countries. Woohoo! 17. <laughs> That's so great. We are so grateful for all of your support. Since this episode is airing during the traditional holiday season here in the U.S., we thought we'd have some fun learning about some holiday foods that people consume around the world. We're calling it Seasons Eatings. Yes. (laughs) You know what? This is going to be a fun episode for us for at least two reasons. (laughs) Number one, we get to learn about some of these foods along with you. And number two, we always love it when we get to eat because we're going to actually try some of these foods as well. Yes. You know, we like trying all the different foods on the podcast. So holiday foods is right up our alley. (laughs) And we'd like to apologize in advance for any mispronunciations that we might have along the way. We're going to try our best. (laughs) We are, but I'm sure there will be many mispronunciations today. (laughs) What are you doing for the holidays, Megan? You know, seeing family, maybe going to some parties with friends, you know, celebrations. Yeah, that's pretty much what we're doing too. And recovering from a school year. Oh my gosh, absolutely. (laughs) I can't wait till that grading is done. That's right. (laughs) Well, we thought maybe the best way to discuss the holiday foods was to do it by holiday. And so we're going to start with Hanukkah. The word Hanukkah means dedication, and this celebration is called the Feast of Dedication or the Festival of Lights. This celebration commemorates the victory of Jewish freedom fighters, the Maccabees, over the Greek occupiers in the year 139 BCE. The Maccabees recaptured Jerusalem's holy temple, which had been converted into a place of idol worship by the Greeks. They needed pure oil to light the temple menorah and rededicate the temple, thus the Feast of Dedication. They found just enough oil to burn for one day, but miraculously, one night's worth of oil lasted for eight nights. So here in the U.S., we just finished Hanukkah celebrations. They began December 7th and ended December 15th. And you really got to love a celebration that lasts eight days. Yes. And since it's about oil, many of the traditional Hanukkah foods are actually fried. That really makes a lot of sense. I hadn't thought of that before, but so cool. (laughs) One traditional food served during this Jewish celebration is latkes or levavot, which are potato cakes. They're made of shredded potato and onion, eggs, and they're often held together with breadcrumbs or matzah, and then they're fried. Yum. We've actually got some here to try. There is a restaurant here in town, Max and Louie's, and they have a lot of um, really good food there, so we pick some up. So we have latkes, and they're flat and fried, and we've also got... Applesauce and sour cream. Sour cream, that's... To put on top. I think that's the traditional... Yeah, so we're going to try some. What do you think, Megan? Delicious. I agree. (laughs) Yeah, you can really kind of taste the potato. You can taste a little bit of the onion. Mm -hmm. It's it's really good. It is, and I like the applesauce with it. Me too. And the sour cream. So I would highly recommend these. (laughs) I'd eat these again. For sure. And apparently since the Middle Ages... 
fried donuts filled with jelly and topped with powdered sugar called sufganiot have also been served during Hanukkah. I hope I said that right. (laughs) We don't have any to eat here, but we did post a recipe in our show notes if you want to try to make them. The recipe looked a little bit too complicated (laughs) for us. So (laughs) for those of you really great cooks out there, try it. Yeah, and let us know. Instead of sufganiot, Moroccan Jews eat svenja, a fried sweetened orange flavored donut because Jaffa oranges come into season at that time. Mm, That sounds really good. And challah bread and beef brisket are also commonly served during Hanukkah. Challah bread is a special bread usually made up of braided strands of dough. It can have three, four, or six strands braided, and the braids look like arms that are entwined, symbolizing love. Before braiding, a portion of the dough is separated as a contribution to the Lord, considered a mitzvah, a blessing, or a good deed. The word challah means portion. And we have some challah bread here. Yes, that we're also try. from also from Max and Louis. Mm, nothing like fresh bread. Uh, mm. It's so good. It melts in your mouth. Yeah, that is really really good. Uh-huh. Mm, I love fresh bread. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> in Colombia, South America, Jews eat patacones or tostones, which are kind of like latkes but are made with green plantains instead of potatoes. Interesting. The plantains are sliced and fried in oil. It's a popular side dish or appetizer year-round in Colombia. Another group of Jews called Beta Israel are found in Ethiopia. They traditionally don't celebrate Hanukkah the same way as those in Israel do, but they do eat a celebratory dish called dorawat, which is chicken stew, or yebegwat, which is lamb stew. These stews are slow-cooked dishes that simmer for hours with lots of different spices like cardamom, clove, paprika, ginger, garlic, and berberry. It's often served with hard-boiled eggs and a traditional Ethiopian bread called injera. I've actually had dorawat both in Ethiopia and in the U.S. I have some Ethiopian friends here who have made it for me, and it is delicious. The slow-cooked chicken is super tender, and because they cook it for so long with all of the spices, it really melts in your mouth. Injera is really a spongy bread. You tear off pieces, and that's what you use to sop up the stew and to eat it. So you don't use forks or spoons. You use the injera instead, and I love it. In Ethiopia, Doro or Yebegwat are not just eaten for Hanukkah, they're the national dish of Ethiopia and are eaten during many celebrations. In fact, Ethiopian Christians often eat it on Christmas Day. So let's talk about some other Christmas foods. Christmas season is celebrated in many countries around the world, but especially in Western Europe and the Americas. Celebrations often start in early December with the beginning of Advent, And they culminate in Christmas Day, which commemorates the birth of Jesus Christ in Bethlehem. Scandinavian countries begin the holiday season with a celebration of St. Lucia's Day, which kicks off Advent. According to legend, when Christians were still a persecuted Roman minority and hiding in the catacombs, St. Lucia brought them food while wearing a candlelit wreath on her head to light the way so her hands were free to carry more food. Scandinavians celebrate St. Lucia's Day with a St. Lucia's wreath, a glazed sweetened bread decorated with candles and colorful ribbons. I think I've seen pictures of those. I think I have too. And if you're celebrating Christmas in Italy, cucidate are popular, and those are similar to Fig Newtons, but much more delicious. (laughs) And if you're lucky and like seafood, the Feast of the Seven Fishes is also commonly eaten there, often with eel as one of the seven fishes. And of course, in Italy, there is panettone. This bread is thought to originate in Milan, and it is a sweet bread or fruitcake kind of thing, and it has a cup shape, a cupola shape. It takes several days to make, and it usually contains some type of citrus with raisins or chocolate. We've got one here to try. We purchased it from our neighborhood grocery store, and this one has orange in it, orange and raisins. So it's a sweet bread with orange and raisins. Let's try it. Okay. It's so good. That orange is really good in there. It really is. It's like softer than I was expecting it to be, but it's really good. It is, though. I think the orange makes it for me. It would be really good 
with coffee. Yes. So that's panettone. I would totally eat that again. I just ate all of it. <laughs> Good for you, Megan. <laughs> if you're in Canada, you might be having butter tarts, which are small pastries with a sweet filling. Ingredients include butter, sugar, maple or corn syrup, eggs, and sometimes walnuts and raisins. After Christmas Eve services, Canadians often eat tortiere, which is a meat pie, and it's made with anything from ground pork to salmon. Pies are also popular in England, called Christmas pie or mince pies or mince meat. Traditionally, these were made with shredded beef or mutton, suet, which is the fat from the beef or the mutton, dried fruit, and spices, and they were shaped like a manger. Now they're less savory and more sweet, often made with pastry dough, dried fruit, and a spice mixture of things like nutmeg, cloves, and cinnamon, and of course, distilled spirits. Of course. (laughs) I'm sure that's what makes it sweet. (laughs) So let's move on to Greece. Christmas is a big deal in Greece. There are many, many foods associated with the celebration, but some that we found are Mela Macarona cookies, and these are honey-soaked and topped with ground walnuts, which sounds good. Sounds so good. <laughs> they also make something called Christopsimo, or Christ's bread, and this is a sweet round loaf, and it's infused with cloves, cinnamon, orange, and then topped with a cross of dough, and... The cross ends, these dough ends, are wrapped in walnuts. Also sounds delicious. Yes, it does. If you're celebrating Christmas in Poland, you might eat babka or sweet bread. This is often eaten on Christmas Eve following a fast. Polish families set out an extra place setting for the lone wanderer who may pass through. And karuszczyki or angel wings, also called bow tie fritters, are sugary fried donuts. Mm. Sounds like we need a trip to Poland at Christmas time. (laughs) Definitely. And Greece. (laughs) And if you happen to be enjoying the Christmas markets in Germany or Austria, try Stolen. Now, Stolen's a spicy sugar-covered fruitcake. And I do want to say Merry Christmas to my sister, Sabina, who lives in Germany. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, Sabina. In Russia and Ukraine, get ready for a feast. They do a 12-dish vegetarian feast to commemorate the 12 apostles. Often the first of the 12 dishes is shivo, or kucha, made of cooked wheat berries, poppy seeds, dried fruit, and honey. All guests must have at least one spoonful, but customarily you wait until the first star appears in the sky before eating. Mm. <laughs> I don't know if I could wait that long. (laughs) In Russia, you may eat shuba, which literally means herring under a fur coat. Interesting. Its main ingredients are pickled herring, hard-boiled eggs, mayonnaise, and grated vegetables like carrots or beets or potatoes and onions. The top layer is usually made of mayonnaise or some kind of beet dressing, And that resembles a warm winter coat, so herring under a fur coat. Interesting. You might also have holidays or meat aspic. This is a savory veggie salad made by boiling meat until the stock is gelatinous and then using it to stick the veggies together. I have to say that doesn't sound too appetizing. (laughs) Any of the aspics, I'm a little bit like, I mean, I'd try them. I'd I'd try it. Oh, for sure I would too. (laughs) If you're in Finland, you could try a star or windmill-shaped cookie made with ricotta cheese and filled with prune jam called hyola tortu. And I want to say huva yolua, <laughs> which is Merry Christmas in Finnish. I learned that from my sister Tuya. She lives in Helsinki. Nice. Well, staying in the Scandinavian countries, on Christmas Eve in Sweden, you might enjoy a Yule board. This is a buffet-style feast of cold foods like sliced meats, fish, cheese, and pickles, or a hot dish called Janssen's Temptation. And this is a casserole made with potatoes, onions, anchovies, and cream. And staying in Scandinavian countries, in Norway, Sweden, Denmark, Finland, and... The U.S. like Minnesota. Yes. (laughs) You might get to try lutefisk. It's made by soaking dried cod or another white fish in lye or sodium hydroxide, and you soak it for several days. 
Then it's steamed to create a very gelatinous texture and an interesting smell. (laughs) (laughs) And yes, folks, it tastes like it sounds. We don't have any here to try, but my grandfather liked to eat it on Christmas Eve. And so we often had it on the Christmas Eve buffet. And the rest of the family pretty much let him (laughs) eat what he wanted. The rest of us avoided it. Of course, if you're in Norway, you'll probably have some lefse. This is a very thin flatbread made from potatoes. And we've actually made some since both of us have Norwegian ancestors. So we've got some here to try. It's usually topped with butter or butter and sugar, or some people add cinnamon or jam, and then it's rolled up and eaten. Okay, so we've got one with just butter, and that's Megan's tradition is butter only, right? Butter only. Okay, let's try butter only. What do you think of the butter only, Megan? That's good. Yeah, I think it's good too. Let's try butter and sugar. Okay. Mm -hmm. Also good. I agree. Mm -hmm. So my tradition is butter and sugar. And in my house, absolutely not. Just butter all the way. (laughs) Make sure your butter's really soft. Yes, that's helpful. But because they're, they're really, really thin. Iceland makes a similar flatbread to lefse, but it's made with wheat flour instead of potatoes. Still, it's super thin, and it's usually cut into geometric patterns, like even snowflakes, before it's deep fried. And they call it laufa brua, which means leaf bread or snowflake bread. And our last European country is France, where they have a beautiful dessert called Bouche de Noël, or a Yule log. This is chocolate cake that's baked in the shape of a log and dusted with confectioner's sugar to look like fallen snow. You know, one year I tried to make a Yule log. (laughs) It, you know, it tasted okay. I like to bake. (laughs) It tasted okay, but it didn't look anything (laughs) like the beautiful Yule logs you see on the internet. Oh, they do look tricky to make. Yeah. So let's go to the Philippines where they serve Relinong Menok on Christmas Eve. This is a chicken stuffed with ingredients like pork, cheese, raisins, pine nuts, olives, or really whatever you want, and then roast it. You may also enjoy a leishan, a pig slow roasted over a charcoal pit. And if you're still in the Philippines for breakfast, try babinka. It's rice flour or sticky rice coconut milk, sugar, and water, and then it's wrapped and cooked in banana leaves. You can garnish it with eggs, cheese, or coconut flakes, and it's kind of a sweet, savory combo that actually sounds really delicious. Yeah, I'd like to try that. Mm -hmm, Me too. So here's an interesting dish. If you happen to be in the Czech Republic for Christmas, you may have bathtub carp. It's called bathtub carp because families used to keep a carp alive in their home bathrooms <laughs> Surprise. for up to a week before the holiday. Now you buy a live one from street vendors, bread it, and fry it with a potato salad and fish soup, and you've got a traditional Czech Christmas meal. Hmm. Speaking of interesting seafood holiday dishes, check out these from Greenland. One is called matak. This is raw whale skin, and it's diced into squares. I don't know. I don't know. I'm pretty adventurous, but... Raw whale skin. Yeah, I'm sure it's delicious. Let's hope. (laughs) Another one is called kiviak, and this is made... Get this. They stuff a seal skin full of hundreds of seabirds, and they let them ferment inside for seven months. I think I'd rather have the whale skin. That's a hard pass. Yeah, yeah. I'd, I'd go for the whale skin over yeah. that. Well, after the seven months, I guess the birds are removed and then they're served from the hollowed out sea carcass. Yum. Yum. <laughs> Happy holidays. In countries in the Southern Hemisphere where Christmas occurs in the summer, dishes are lighter and often use things like meringue and fresh fruit. Several countries also make items which are wrapped Fillings wrapped in something. So they're kind of like wrapped presents. In Puerto Rico, they make pasteles, and the filling is usually ground pork or chicken, and it's combined with things like chickpeas or raisins or olives, and then they put a sauce on it, adobo sauce. And then this is wrapped in masa dough made of grated green bananas, yautia, which is a starchy vegetable, and spices. It's then wrapped in banana leaves and boiled in hot water. 
That is very similar to the tamales they make in Mexico, which have fillings made from pork, chicken, beans, or roasted veggies, all wrapped in masa dough made of cornmeal and then wrapped in corn husks and steamed. We actually have tamales here with us today. These are bean and cheese tamales. Yeah, these are not hard to find in Texas. No, they're not, especially (laughs) South Texas, which is where we are. So let's try a tamale. The beans have a nice spice. Yeah, they do. And sometimes on tamales, I think the masa's a little bit dry. I agree, but that's good. These are good. Yeah, these, these are have, good. These have a little more moisture, I think. They're hard to make. It's usually you have a big tamalada where you have the whole family comes over and it's a couple of days wow. putting these together. So appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> In Venezuela, they make something very similar. They're called hayacas. I think. It's cornmeal wrapped in banana leaves, and they have some kind of filling inside. But if you happen to be in Japan during Christmas, you may be surprised. It's not a religious holiday there, more like a cross between Valentine's Day and New Year's Eve. And if you want to fit in, you'll eat... Kentucky Fried Chicken. Kentucky Fried Chicken. (laughs) (laughs) But make sure you pre-order it, or you may be waiting in line for several hours, or it might be sold out. That popular. Yeah. That's crazy. They call it... Kurisi Masu Niwa Kentucky, which means Kentucky for Christmas. <laughs> you did that really well. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> you know, there are so many Christmas foods and beverages from around the world. So let's talk about some holiday drinks. During the Christmas season, you'll find mulled wine. It's also called glue wine or glowing wine. And you can find this at Christmas fairs in places like Germany and Austria. So we actually have some glue wine that we purchased here. And we're going to try it. It's served warm. Cheers. Served warm, and it's a red wine. And we heated it. And then garnished it with orange. Yes. And it's delightful. That is really, really good. Yeah, I like that. I'm going to drink that (laughs) (laughs) year-round. Of course, there are other holiday beverages that you might hear about in the U.S., things like eggnog. It's not my favorite, but lots of people love it. And oftentimes with eggnog, you'll add some alcohol to it, like rum or whiskey or brandy. I could get behind that. And in Peru, they sip La Chocolatadas, a hot chocolate made with condensed or evaporated milk and spices like cinnamon, chili powder, cloves, and nutmeg. It's like Mexican hot chocolate, usually made with bittersweet chocolate and spices, so it's less sweet than the hot chocolate in the U.S., In Peru, they serve it with a cake similar to the Italian panettone, which is also a Christmas fruit cake. Hmm. There are so many more Christmas foods. We just gave you a small taste, and we took a small taste (laughs) of the foods that are out there. But let's talk about some other holidays. Yeah, many cultures don't celebrate Christmas or Hanukkah, but they also have traditional foods that they consume during their own holiday celebrations. Tank Yuen is a Chinese dish often served during winter solstice or lantern festivals. These are small rice balls filled with sweet or savory ingredients and then served in broth. The Chinese also eat moon cakes filled with sweet paste like red bean. For the winter solstice called toji, the Japanese will make dishes with kabocha squash, which is also known as Japanese pumpkins, One of these foods is a kabacha soup, a creamy, velvety soup that can also be used as a dipping sauce. Mm, That sounds good. For the Vietnamese New Year called Tet, you could serve bon chung. It's a rice cake made with sticky rice, pork, mung beans, green onions, fish sauce, and salt and pepper. You can also put them on family altars to pay tribute to ancestors and provide prayers for the upcoming year. Diwali is India's biggest holiday of the year. It gets its name from a row of clay lamps that Indians light outside their homes to symbolize the inner light that protects from spiritual darkness or good over evil. It started as a Hindu holiday, but non-Hindus also celebrate this national festival in their own ways. Some of the common foods eaten in India during this time are samosas, which are yummy, Yum. or alu banda. These are fried dough or rice flour wrap, savory fillings. You can get them at most Indian restaurants, and I highly recommend them. (laughs) You can also try paneer tikka, which is a marinated cheese and veggies, and this can be grilled or broiled. All of these go really well with green chutney. 
For something sweeter, you could try maruku, which is a fried dough with spices made in concentric circles. Yeah, I watched them do it on a YouTube video. Mm -hmm. They basically take the dough and just on a griddle, they just keep squeezing the dough out in circles, circles, circles. Till Sounds the pretty. It is. It <laughs> looks really delicious. If you happen to be in Iran and you're celebrating the winter solstice, you might have a dish called fezenjan. This is a chicken stew that's flavored with pomegranates. I It's one of my favorite dishes. We used to eat at an Iranian restaurant here in San Antonio, and it was what I always ordered. It was so delicious. Tender chicken with a walnut and pomegranate sauce. But the restaurant isn't open anymore, Aww. so we've got to find another place to eat pheasant, John. Well, what about New Year's? Foods eaten on New Year's Eve are often there to bring you good luck and health. So let's talk about some of these dishes. Well, in China, you might eat a whole cooked fish with uncut noodles to aid in longevity. The longer the noodles, the longer your life. The day before Chinese New Year, eat jiaozi, which are dumplings shaped like gold ingots, which is currency that's, that was used in ancient China. So you do this for financial luck. And of course, they must also eat oranges because that's going to help with prosperity. If you're in the southern U.S., New Year's foods are all like the Chinese, about financial prosperity. <laughs> you could eat black-eyed peas any way you want, and those are supposed to be really lucky. You could eat collard greens, and the green is for money. You could eat cornbread, and the gold color symbolizes gold. And you can eat a dish called Hoppin' John. Hoppin' John usually contains beans or the black-eyed peas and rice and sometimes bacon. And the beans in the Hoppin' John are supposed to symbolize coins. In Japan, try toshikoshi, soba, which are buckwheat flour noodles. The soba length symbolizes long life, and buckwheat flour noodles symbolize resiliency. But you must slurp the noodles because if you break them, that's bad luck. Oh, that's kind of scary. <laughs> <laughs> the Spanish eat a grape on each stroke of midnight on New Year's, symbolizing the upcoming calendar months. If one grape is bitter... Watch out during that month <laughs> in the next year. Well, ring-shaped cakes are popular during New Year's, often with something baked inside like a coin. You will have good luck for a year if you get the piece with the coin. Hmm. It's kind of like king cakes that they serve during Mardi Gras. Yeah. Ring cakes called kransake made of marzipan are popular in Denmark and Norway. The marzipan... It's often wrapped around a bottle of wine or aquavit, mm, <laughs> then decorated. Fish is always good, too. Fish scales resemble coins, and fish swim forward, which symbolizes progress. If you happen to be in Germany or Eastern Europe on New Year's, you must eat sauerkraut. The more you eat, the bigger your financial luck. That's a lot of sauerkraut. <laughs> they also like soft pretzels. I like soft pretzels, too. So that is a very small taste of season's eatings. We hope you'll forgive us for our poor pronunciation of many of these dishes. Yes, please we, do. We tried. <laughs> <laughs> we obviously couldn't cover every country or every dish, so we would love to hear about the special foods that you enjoy during your holiday celebrations. Food is such a huge part of culture and heritage. You can learn a lot about cultures by enjoying a meal or snack with someone who celebrates differently than you do. We wish for all of you a happy, healthy, and satisfying time with family and friends. Whatever holiday you celebrate. And have some great food, too. Join us next time when we'll celebrate 2023 as the International Year of Millets, a group of ancient grains. Happy holidays, class dismissed. We hope you enjoyed this episode. You can find the show notes and a list of sources on our website, yournutritionprofs.com. Your homework is to follow us at Your Nutrition Profs on Instagram and to listen to our next episode. You can listen on Amazon Prime, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube, or anywhere podcasts are found. We'd appreciate it if you'd like us, write a review, subscribe, and invite your family and friends to join us too. If you have a nutrition or health question you'd like answered, let us know. 
We may even do a show about it. Send an email to yournutritionprofs at gmail.com or click on the Contact Us page on our website. Thanks to Brian Pittman for creating our artwork. You can find him on Instagram at brianpittman77. See you next time. time.